Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today what we are going to see is we are going to look into depth of casting and the basic thing which is used in casting that is sand. What is a sand and how it is used for molding any of the object. So molding sand is a normal sand. Sand along with other mixtures like clay, water, etc. So these all things are used in sand, mixed with it properly, mixed condition in proper condition in proper constituent and then again it is used in a crafting process. It fills the entire pattern except your cavity. So it helps to hold your cavity, it helps to hold your object. So in this way sand plays a very important role. Without sand casting cannot be done. So it has some properties, it has some constituents. As I had said, sand consists of your normal sand, water, clay, etc. In specific quantity, and normal sand doesn't mean any kind of sand, sand silicate. Sand silicate is used. Along with sand silicate, clay, water, etc. in different quantities, in different constituents and in different numbers are used according to the need. So whether the metal is ferrous, non-ferrous, any kind of machining or any kind of casting, basically casting needs sand. So when we will come to the characteristics of the sand, the main characteristic of the sand is it should be permeable in nature. Permeable comes with excess gas takeoff. So whenever molten sand comes in picture or molten metal comes in picture, it enters your sand. It has to enter the cavity. So when entering the cavity, it touches the sand so when it touches the sand its heat goes in the sand so if sand is not vented properly or the sand do not have the properly of permeability the gases are trapped so what happens when the gas is trapped it do not reach the atmosphere and get settled inside and it is entrapped so what happens your casting becomes weak as your sand becomes weak it affects your casting so in this way your sand should be permeable in nature so that excess gases which comes through what it comes through the molten metal it should not get entrapped in the sand so we will come to the, with this we will come to the next property the next property is refractory it is a new word in the whole sand casting process what happens in refractory as soon as a molten metal comes inside excess gases should be trapped off it should not get trapped in but with the property of refractory what happens it should also sustain the temperature your sand cannot just move off or it cannot just change its shape just because of the hot metal it should sustain its shape and it should be in its shape so it should sustain the high temperature just because of that it should have the property of refractory so sand should be refractory enough to sustain the high temperature then comes strength it should have high strength so again to sustain the temperature to sustain the pressure of your molten metal pressure is a very important property like if the pressure is more your sham should not come down it should not get swiped away with the molten metal so strength is an important property with strength comes hardness I won't say the sand should be very hard but it should be having some property of hardness so that it should not get wiped away it should not get swiped away now I'll talk about the very important property as the chemicals which are there in the metal can react with your sand or it can react with any of this pattern also so what happens is when it reacts with the sand it changes its property or it can swipe away your sand so again your sand should be chemically neutral it should not be chemically active so these are some property that your sand should be highly permeable it should have this property of refractory it should not be chemically active and also it should have strength as well as hardness to just sustain the high temperature and high pressure of your molten metal so if all these properties are present in your sand it can be ideally used again i'm telling you sand just doesn't mean normal sand it is sand silicate along with clay water and additional additives as i said additives are very important like what are additives these are additional cereals grams etc which is just added to the sand to just enhance its property so even additives are equally important but the quantity varies from different pattern to pattern 
So these are some important properties and very less important constituents of your sand. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikeda and do subscribe our channel Ikeda.